Hello, my name is Victor Belio Gonzalez. I'm here from Gencoa, a company based in Liverpool, UK. I'm here to present a paper regarding the new developments in my transporting devices. I will be giving some kind of rouse over the different things that we do in the area of my transporting. Let's let me introduce Jinko to you. Jinko has been in business for over 26 years. We are a manufacturing company with manufacturing sources of different types, mainly plasma sources, ion sources, manufacturing battery mainly related, ion sources as I mentioned before. We also do controllers, we do sensors for those controllers, and we also different devices like for example the selenium sulfur efficient cell tool in order to put a vapor or sulfur selenium into a vacuum process. Those processes will involve many plasma, so not all of them, but most of them will involve plasma, and those plasma processes at the end will produce components which are used in the technological and everyday use world, from transport application to solar absorption, energy harvesting, display, semiconductor and decorative metallization, for applications like, for example, the telescope in the area of OLED and many others. Within the cathodic plasma sources, we do high current low voltage sources like our sources. We do high voltage low current sources, mainly in the area of low discharges. Our main business is in the area of sputtering. And within Sputtering, the extreme will be the use of high, beams, high current impulse power applied to the discharge. When we look at plasmas, we look at them from the point of view of the containment. What is the vessel that contains that plasma? So, the same as in this cup of coffee, there will be something that forces the content to be retained between typically two forces. So here is gravity, but it's the forces that contain that retain the gravity of the liquid that contain the plasma. The magnetron sputtering sources, those forces are the electrical field and the magnetic field. In magnetron sputtering, the electrons will be pushed from the negatively charged target and they will be contained by the magnetic field. So the magnetic field makes the retention job and the electrical field makes the pushing job. In all this, the plasma will be then trapped between the negatively charged target and the magnetic field, and the ionization due to collisions will produce ions, positively charged ions, that will collide against the target and will produce a target erosion. We probably could say that the 1970s is the start of the industrial applications of sputtering, and from 1972, we've got the Sloan design, the Sloan cathode, and it's a cathode that's still being used today in the semiconductor industry. In this cathode, the sputtering target is the material that's inside this wall, and the magnetic field is created around this uh, in, inner part of the cylinder, and the electrons are being trapped and separated in this area, creating a plasma and the plasma and the collisions will produce a coating that moves in all directions, but the concentric area tends to produce a very uniform coating. This is why it was used mainly in the semiconductor industry in very early ages, and it still is used that way. An extension of the Sloan cathode could be considered the internally sputtering cathodes, in which the plasma is also inside the cylindrical shaped cathode, and in that a wire or a tape piece transfer internally and roll back and this will coat the tape or the wire 360 degrees around. So an example of this application would be the, the coating production of superconductor tapes. A famous example of a manufacture of this particular type of tapes is American Superconductor and you can see the complexity of components and layers in order to create the particular superconductor properties of the YBCO. This is an example of YBCO material, a 
a liquid nitrogen temperature in which becomes superconductor and a magnet floats over it. And the whole engineering behind this is quite remarkable and it is an example of a success in applications for real high power high current devices. Going back to some of the original products and applications, I'm going to mention the pulse efficient cells, the 2D thermoelectrics as an example, and some of the high applications on clusters mainly. There are some very interesting new materials created, 2D materials using pulse efficient cells of selenium with copper with silver. And the group of mine so Martin Gonzalez in Madrid has been producing very nice features, very nice materials, 2D materials, together with Professor Briones. Pulse epizone cell basically pulses the input of selenium on, off, on, off, on, off. And that is producing an enrichment of the a saturation enrichment of the selenium vapor, which forces certain type of growth on the deposit film. So instead of producing a kind of a solid copper selenium composition, it forces a self orientation due to the saturation of the copper layer that is being produced. So by having a copper layer and then saturating the copper, you get into a 2D growth. On the area of interest in the use of management sputtering is by a group of hotels also in Madrid creating clusters. So this is a device which is a typical cluster has been used for more than 20 years in, in the field. Um, it traditionally produces clusters like a gold clusters. By using several devices in the same unit they can use alloy clusters. An interesting part is that when you start to place the clusters in different positions and then you create clusters and then you coat the cluster so you create a core of one particular type of material and a shell of a different type of material. In addition, by using different type of power, for example DC, you can create different type of clusters. Some clusters which are a combination of all elements, more or less randomly distributed. And by using high beams, you can get the distribution of different types of clusters. So some clusters which have this combination of materials, some that are more shelf, and also a segregation of some of the clusters, like in this case, the gold. An area of interest for the application of nanoparticles has been medicine. In imaging, for example, has been done for Several years uh, from 2013, we see papers and publications. The use of gold functionalizes the gold and introduces the gold into different tumors so it can enhance the radiation or for enhancing the imaging. This is an example of um, that kind of work also by Stefan Lucas in the University of Namur in Belgium. And there is a way of looking at the application of clusters, is the use. For plasmonics, in this case, for example, we use clusters, could be gold, could be silver, could be copper, in a matrix like titanium oxide, and that will separate electrically those clusters, and we could have some optical effects, like plasmonic effects, between the combination and the location of those clusters. Those clusters could be controlled in the size and in the relative location to each other and that will create some plasmonic absorbance. Another very interesting application of nanoparticles has been achieved by a group of Ionatics and Intrapin University uh, using hyperins and a nanoparticle generator and those nanoparticles can be relatively controlled, controlled in size and in using a particular software where it could be biased, you can attract those clusters and grow those clusters or amalgamate those clusters into particular locations of high electric field, for example, these tips. As an example of new materials, I would like to highlight this particular one from a group of uh, uni one university in Seville, in Spain, in which uh, they spot uh, materials in helium 
and that helium gets trapped in the system and also that helium during the process of relaxation it migrates and forms these little bubbles creating a material which contains many voids filled with this particular gas. We have to look now at certain applications, certain areas of application, for some of the decorative applications, which are very common from the purely decorative to sometimes functional, like the reflection on those um, headlamps or anti reflective coatings or solar control coatings on, on glasses. But in many of these aspects, both the aesthetic and the sometimes also the functional had to be combined. This plays another of the big areas of application for magnetron sputtering. Another area of application is transport airspace and coatings on windows are very common in many of the spaces related to transport airspace. Energy harvesting has been another area of great use for magnetron sputtering from solar cell to thermal solar to some coatings used also in the wind power generation. Solar control architectural glass as well had to fulfill two roles. One is the, the beauty, the static aspect, and the second one is efficiency. For example, this particular one in sunny Madrid, covering a very large space, it has to prevent a heavy thermal load entering into the building by having a good light uh, uh, appealing for the building, for the interior of the building. In 1970, 1980, we've got the possibilities of having planar cathodes in circular rectangular shape, but some post cathodes and some conical shaped cathodes. This particular conical shaped cathode may use a semiconductor and a optical storage for CD, DVD, which will appear a bit later. In the 1980s, we've seen an increase in applications for the semiconductor industry, and um, with the need to decrease the number of defects, the plasmas that are trapped in the magnetic field are being rotated, and in that rotation, produce a clean target. Over the last 40 years, there's been an increase in the size of the wafers to be coated, and for that reason, the cathodes, the full phase erosion cathodes, had to be adapted in order to increase larger and larger surfaces. The area of semiconductor has been growing very strongly, and today is one of the strongest areas of growth and application for magnetron sputtering. This is an example of one of our cathodes, a full phase erosion cathodes, where the plasma shape is being rotated around the surface, creating the plasma erosion. This is the result of our final target erosion over many kilowatt hours in production, maintaining uniformity over the wafers. These are examples of wafers coated with copper during the outtesting uh, gene core. As I mentioned before, a way to control defects is controlling the redeposition areas. In a static cathodes where the man's are not moving, we got a redeposition area, a standard cathode, and that redeposition could produce a number of defects. It is important to minimize the area by its pottery in the largest area possible now cathode and that is achieved with what we call the high yield cathodes. In that way we can see our improvement from the number of defects from high level of defects to a lower level of defect. In the 1990s an area of application was the large target area magnetrons in which a section of magnetron of plasma was being moved back and forth over a large area. These applications were mainly display and solar panels. Those, although those applications died away, they left something behind for a new generation of cathodes. This movement of the plasma is something that is used today, has been adapted for narrower targets. The magnetron, the plasma is moved back and forth and will produce an erosion of the entire width of the target. And the erosion can be controlled in such a way that is a very effective use of the target material over the entire width of the target. We have to move back to the 1980s for a different way of thinking on how to tackle the issues that. Uh, related to clean targets of target utilization and increase of power density. 
is we are thinking of sign the box came from Macari from Shatterproof class and he thought of the use of a cylindrical target in which the plasma was located in a static zone but what it was moving was the target itself by rotating the target this has revolutionized the high productivity long campaign sputtering technology which has turned a big deal of what used to be done on planes to rotatable cylindrical cathodes. Over the surface of the cylindrical target, a magnetic field trap is created. Together with the electric field trap, the electrons are confined and the confinement of the electrons will generate the ionizations that will enable the sputtering process to take place over that particular region where the plasma resides. An adequate magnetic field design together with the movement of the target it is possible to create a uniform clean erosion over the entire surface of the cylinder. The deposition of dielectric materials has been one of the greatest achievements in the use of dual cathodes in AC medium frequency configuration where the electrons are able to travel from one cathode to the other which acts as an anode in an alternative way. The electrons will find a path where they find the mineral resistance. Typically that path goes to the clean part which is at the back of the target. An improvement in that technology was uh, done by us, by Jinkoa, in one of our patterns where we created a impedance, low impedance path for the electrons, where the electron will travel to the clean part of the target at the front, maintaining the main plasma at the front of the cathode in this region. In management space, we not only need the cathode, but we also need the anode. And when the anode is active and found, then the plasma is confined. When the anode is lost and stops receiving electrons, then the plasma escapes trying to find a way to close the circuit back to the power supply. In this case, the plasma confinement is lost. Using the anode creates a kind of influence in terms of uh, process stability and right operation of the power supplies. So it is important sometimes to create these kind of paths that are able to be stable during the whole process for the electrons that come from the cathode arrive safely and stably to the anode. Different anode configurations will be needed depending on the power mode and depending on the type of confinement that is pursued for the particular process. As an example, in this particular aluminum oxide process with dual AC cathodes, we use a type of confinement that provides a dense area of sputtering, a densification and a production of ions which are bombarding the surface which is growing. Manatural sputtering sometimes could be used in a reverse role, so instead of producing a coating, it produces an etched on the surface. For that, we have a magnetic field created over the surface surface and that will trap the electrons, create a plasma being trapped in that region and that plasma will be responsible for etching the substrate surface. So this is an example of the etching of 1000 nanometer silicon oxide so you can see the interference fringes created by the light the diffraction on this region. This type of technology is easily transferable to a row to row production. Let me briefly touch on an area of application currently very active in the area of antimicrobial antiviral surfaces. The flexibility of management sputtering enables us to create surfaces with different features and those features have been tested very effective against bacteria and against viruses like for example in the case of this uh, coronavirus 
is able to deactivate the coronavirus in 15 minutes in to a level of 99.98%. Many technology processes require feedback control. For that control, we use controllers, which will be feeding a reactive gas into a process that consumes, a process that process consumes, and we can look at what happened to the substrate, or what happened to the non-reactive gases, or we can look at what happened to the target itself, and that information can be fed back into the control system in order to provide adequate responses. This is an example for a silicon nitride process control on a semiconductor application using silicon nitride process. For that, we have a sensor which is looking at the gas which is not being consumed and we inject the gas via MFC and we got the controller looking at information from the sensor and injecting the adequate response gas. In the previous slide we saw the use of this optic sensor. In this optic sensor we create internally a plasma and the plasma is the one that is being monitored. This plasma responds to the different gas chemistry that is fed into the cavity which comes from the main system. In that way, we are able to sniff into the process and respond to the process. Following the previous example, we have here the hysteresis response of the system of the plasma process to the injection of gas. We inject gas typically in a gradual form as a ramp going up and coming down, going up and coming down. And we see the responses of the different sensors, for example, the target for a high voltage will come down as it gets poisoned with excess of gas. As the gas comes down, then the target will be poisoned and the voltage will go up. Down when it poisons, up when it poisons. And in a similar manner, when the, gas, when the gas is being consumed, the partial pressure sensor will give us a low value. And as the target stops consuming so much of this gas becomes excess and the partial pressure of the gas becomes higher as it's the, the partial pressure goes down and it's getting consumed the pressure of the partial pressure goes down then goes up when it's not being consumed and gets down when it's getting consumed and we can use all the sensors information in order to create a feedback control looking at the information coming from the optics natural signal we could equally use a phase control of the flow and we could also monitor the voltage at different levels of the hysteresis in order to control the process at different set points these feedback control systems are used for large productivity and especially large area when the uniformity that you want to achieve and the speed of production requires to speed up a process. In those cases, a feedback control system is needed. Marine transparency so sources are not used as a means to coat the surface, but to produce a treatment on that surface. Process pattern sources for treatment could be single, but also could be dual monitors, which typically we use be used with oxygen creating a plasma and mainly the application is for etching of flexible organic web material. Auto rural applications for plasma treaters for management pattern as plasma treaters are very common and are able to work at this very large speed for very wide webs up to five meters over a very very high speed up to 1,000 meters a minute. Money transporting excels where there's a materials challenge. As an example, that material challenge is the production of fifth batteries, which is expected to grow, it has been growing, but this year probably will be one of the fastest growth for the production, large production of these batteries. One of the first successes of uh, Genkoa cathodes was in the area of OLED for transparent barriers. 
all the OLED devices need protection. That protection is created by encapsulation. Vitex in the 2000s came with a patent in order to overcome the issue of poor barrier of inorganics due to uh, pinhole defects by inserting a layer of inorganic with a polymer inorganic polymer inorganic polymer that created a difficult path for the air and the atmosphere to come into the device and that created the possibility of the first galaxy phones the first OLED displays that we have seen in the market the time the need for simple barriers has been growing and a way to solve the problem of adding simple barriers into these complex multi-layer barriers came from the telescope industry the use of silicon nitride as a barrier effective barrier with low number of defects and that came as a protective for silver on the telescope industry moving to a different subject then general Monitoring sputtering, 90% of the uses are in the field of what we call low bombardment or balance sources. But there is a strong field of application which covers around 10% of the market in the area of high ion bombardment. And for that, what we're looking at is that the plasma to be ejected and propelled towards a substrate that is being treated. We have different sources. The plasma interaction between different sources make the plasma be confined in a different way. And as a part of the design, we combine magnetics and we change the angles of those magnetics in order to have different type of entrapments for the plasma. Sometimes we can open the plasma, and sometimes we can force for the plasma to close in into the subject area. We have created a range of cathodes called BTR in which we provide the ability to control the degree of balance and unbalance of these cathodes. By controlling the direction and the movement of these additional magnetic means, we are able to control the plasma interaction with the substrate. And this is an example by Nanofor Energy and PVT, in which the current arriving at the substrate can be controlled by using different degrees of balance and unbalance positions. Management design and power mode, for example, from happiness to the addition of a positive pulse, have improved the performance and of what can be achieved with using happiness technology. Happiness can be used sometimes as a coating system method. We call this method happiness V plus two, in which a happiness mode with a V plus is able to dope the surface and in that doping of the surface we are able to improve the properties of a simple DC sputtering process dramatically. Another example is the use of the high power positive pulse in which the mode is an etching mode in combination typically with another cathode which acts almost as a neutralizer. What we're able to achieve with this new technology is by pulsing, we are sending a high level of ions over the substrate, and that is able to produce high rates of etching in the area of 100 meter per minute on silicon nitride. So, as a summary, management sputtering has entered into the fifth decade of industrial applications. Management sputtering market has continued to grow over all this period. The semiconductor display energy and the creative are the main applications with semiconductor and display being probably the strongest at the moment. A new materials and technology applications are emerging and will continue to emerge. And sensor medical applications will increase. Thank you for your time.